So, so we, you know, we don't stop at just the hops, right? Like these steps are ours, the, the deck over here is ours. Because at the end of the day, you know, how it, how it uh, integrates with the site yeah. and the property, it matters a lot. Parts are made in a factory, right? So it, it is a factory built home. Um, and then they're rapidly assembled on site, kind of like Legos. I'm just gonna like, uh, I want you to guess how big it is based on like, once, once you go inside. This one goes for around 300, 350,000. And uh, that includes permitting, installation, the foundations, the utility hookups. Well, where someone bought one of these, maybe it was a little bit bigger for like 400 something thousand and then put it on land in Joshua Tree, and then it got written up in a magazine and sold for like two million bucks or something? Yes, that was, that was one of the first ones that we built. It was uh, 1150 square feet, two bedroom, two bathroom, and it sold for, yeah, two million. Not just me being like, oh, it looks like a million dollar house. It's a, it's a processed wood that basically, you don't need to coat it or seal it, so it's just the raw wood, and over time it'll bleach in the sun. So and it'll that's go on for, purpose. That's on purpose. You don't need, uh, any kind of special coatings or like maintenance, it's maintenance free. It's an entirely steel structure. Better performance in earthquakes. It's about four times stronger than your typical home. Windows are all aluminum, which is something that you do see in conventional homes, but normally only very expensive homes. It's maximize the light and it makes it look a lot fancier. Like look at, it, it makes you look tiny. Uh, there's a lot of engineering that goes into being able to do this to withstand strong winds. Uh, and allow this to be so thin and, and still very performant from an energy efficiency standpoint. This, this is less than an inch. I'd like to turn some of our shoes. Oh, yeah. 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 Ceiling door. Floor to ceiling big door. door. It's a big door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is dope. I mean, even these doors, right on the inside, they're also big. Wow. It makes it feel so much more spacious. Like the tall ceilings, like everything just feels tall. Yes. It feels like a fancy, like modern hotel. <laughs> what What we're doing is taking the the kind of design, you know, quality and care and thoughtfulness that you normally see in multi million dollar homes and building a panelized system out of that and then making it scale and delivering it to far more people. This kind of window, you normally only see it in like $10 million mansions. And yeah. this window alone would probably be $30,000. How customizable is this if I'm a customer? It's very customizable. If for whatever reason you want to move the window, you could do that, right? If you want to add a window on this wall, you could do that. You could make this window smaller and move that door over here. You could make this space an L. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Also bump it out further this way if they wanted that, if they wanted to go even bigger. There's ridges in the ceiling. I've never seen that. Yeah, so what the, those are our technical tracks. You know, normally when you look at a ceiling, there's kind of, it's a cluttered ceiling. What we've done is we've moved as much as we could, pretty much everything, into these technical tracks so that visually it's not noisy. Right? Visually, it's very clean. You've got white oak, uh, you know, real engineered wood floors, fancy appliances. Wait, does this open up? Uh, no. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it's just like, oh. Yeah, that's so nice. Like, this is an insane are sealed so that from an energy efficiency standpoint, you don't have a lot of air leakage, even though it's a huge door. What's the like biggest home you've done so far with square footage? Yeah, so we're permitting one right now that's uh, 4,000 square feet. That one's actually uh, one story. We've got a, we've got a 3,000 square foot one that's two stories. What we're trying to do this year is, uh, is, about, is around 15,000 square feet. It's kind of insane how, how homes are built. The average American home has 24 different subcontractors involved. Like when I say subcontractors, not people, like entities. Grading and excavation subcontractor, then your foundation, framers, electricians, your plumbers, your your HVAC, your MEP, like it, there's your painters, right? Your, your, 
your drywallers, your, your kitchen installer, your, your maybe maybe that's the same as your bathroom installer, maybe not, right? And these 24 subcontractors are, are not only working on your home, they're working on a bunch of other projects. It's part of why home building takes so long. You could almost do a 10x improvement on time. Yes. And then maybe like half the cost. Yes. Uh, for, for the this market, market segment for the quality. On. Yes. Gotcha. This must have AC somewhere. It does. Really see it, but... it does. Yeah. You've got one and here you've got a couple. This, this is where they are. So some of these are actually, so, so some of these are AC and some of them are uh, a fresh air because it's so airtight we actually need to bring in filtered fresh air. Basically, it goes through a energy recovery ventilator, a bunch of small tubes that, uh, that intersect, right? Even if you're bringing in really hot air or really cold air from the outside, it retains the internal temperature, but it stays fresh. Uh, and that's going through a hospital-grade filter. Yeah, so smoke or, or even just, you know, from like car pollution, right? We, this is in L.A., there's a lot of car pollution in the air. Uh, so even though you're bringing fresh air, you're bringing fresh filtered air. You could basically filter out the full volume of air inside each one of these uh, four times an hour. This is an induction, induction cooktop. So this is a, a, a rib design. It's, 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 it's kind of inspired by, um, you know, classical columns. And, and, and the, 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 the pattern you see on classical columns. Interesting. And there is a, a, like some Roman energy to it. Yeah. Like it. And this is a really beautiful window here, the fogged out window. So you have like all this natural light coming in, but you don't need to worry about privacy. Yeah, yeah privacy. Exactly. And then, and then that light casts on this beautiful texture, right? And you have this, this really nice moment. This is like a true spa shower. Nice. So you can put windows on the different side. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is cool. Make it so you're more connected to nature. You're more connected to the time of day it is, right? Totally. You're more connected to the weather outside. You're still protected from the weather outside, but you're, you, you can feel it. You know, you've got your white oak closet doors. This is real wood. And this is configurable. Going back to that configuration, you can just add more shelves, add drawers. You know, you can do whatever you want. So, okay, square footage guess for this. Um... I want to say like 800 or 750. It's 570. Cover square feet are probably around like 50 to 100, feel 50 to 100 percent bigger. This is the fastest one we built. And, you know, some of this was like we got lucky with the city, but uh, they bought it end of September. We submitted permits the next day. Now we were able to do that because they had bought one of our pre-approved designs. So this, this design was not custom. Most of what we build is custom, this one wasn't. Yeah, okay, but that lets you go faster. That lets us go faster and they wanted fast. They wanted the speed and it also saves some cost. And then we got permits within a month. So basically within a month of selling, we had permits. Uh, then it took us about two weeks to mobilize because quite frankly, we weren't expecting permits that fast. Uh, I'm dying at the permits is such a big deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but, and then, and then we, we, we broke ground. Uh, we had to take out a couple of trees that were actually here. We had to take out an old shed and a brick wall. So that took two weeks. The demolition work and the foundation and the utility trenching. So, uh, you know, trench a few feet deep all the way to the street for uh, plumbing, electrical, uh, and water. And then from there, uh, we broke ground and it was about a month of actually putting these panels together. This is of the fastest, based on public permit records, the fastest newly built LAU, ADU in LA City ever. This one here, like the one you're in right now. You know, and, that, and that's measured from the date that we submitted for permits to the date we got the certificate of occupancy, which is the kind of the final, like, it's okay to move in. Because those two dates you can find public records for. Uh, when you look at those two dates, we had the shortest time for a newly built ADU in LA City uh, ever. So this is, we're standing in LA history right now. Correct. And most startups take a while to make history. You know, like right. you actually are already, you already made a dent. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, I think we could have actually moved faster. Yeah. I had to try, try this out. It's good. 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 So when we expand, the, the approach is each place we expand to, we have to have sufficient volume. Right? We don't, we don't want to spread ourselves. We want to be building dozens of homes in each city region that we expand into. So we'll build a local team, right? And that includes sales, that includes uh, the, the design support that sales has for the 
custom layouts, and that'll also include the team that will physically install and build these. Oh, gotcha. So it's you're really like vertically integrating. We're kind of. full, yeah, yeah, full vertical integration. Gotcha. So that makes it that is kind of why you've been slow to expand geographically, and yes. plus like demand in LA. It's huge. A perfect spot yeah. to build cover, basically. Exactly. You have a little bit of air coming through. Like, oh wow. Say you're in Texas where you've got lots of bugs. And this is an example of like one of those details that we obsess over. So we have these beautiful doors. We've, we've spent all this time and energy getting these to be all really thin. We don't want to ruin your views with, with like this bug screen that's always there. Yep. So this is like the best of both worlds. Exactly, yeah. because it just it just hides away into the frame. What's the core problem like you think cover solve, solving in LA, in LA? The core problem we solve is like making uh, uh, home building better and easier. Right, like, and, and quality at home building better this year. Um, whether we started off with ADUs because true MVP, it still has a kitchen, it still has a bathroom, it still has plumbing, and it has all the safety systems that you need in a home. It's it's basic. It is a home. This is a home. Uh, you know, um, the client's parents will live in this full time. This is their house. So ADUs are small homes. Uh, we figured we could l learn more faster by building many small homes than a few big homes. Right, and when we did make mistakes, uh, they would be less costly because they're on a small scale, right? So it's really around like rate of iteration and rate of learning. What we've done is figured out a way to deliver the kind of quality that you normally get with like the best craftspeople in a way that actually scales, which is moving the complexity into the factory. So now we're gonna go check out the factory. Yeah, I'm so pumped for that, yeah. We're funny. Front, yeah, yeah. Of if you want to stand in front of me. Yeah. I was at a loss as to where I was going next, you know. <laughs> I call it a home behind another home. <laughs> or a heart behind another heart. So I'm delighted. I'm, I'm grateful to you, Alexis, and to all your workers. Uh, I was born in a village in the Philippines. And my parents were teachers. And in appreciation of my teachers, uh, of my parents teaching in the village, the people in the village would build them a home. And so they would build it out of bamboo. And they would bring, I mean the community would bring it literally next to, next to the school where my parents were gonna teach. And so this is like, I'm gonna be here and it's like my home was built for me right here. And I don't really have words to, to thank you for, for this. Uh, like I said, you know, there's my gratitude <laughs> expressed by <laughs> the kumquat. Oh yeah, the kumquat tree, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I now have an expression, the kumquat gratitude to you. Walking into it and both the beauty and the simplicity of it, I walk in and, oh man, I'm home. You know? <laughs> We were here a few months ago. There was no cover here. Yeah, exactly. So we built we built this uh, kind of show unit, show people what a cover looks like when they tour the factory. And what's your capacity out of this factory? Like, are you guys near capacity? Or you... We're not near capacity yet. No. Um, we the bottleneck right now is actually permits. Permits. Yes. So we're working to alleviate that bottleneck, but um, we we should be able to do around a uh, hundred homes a year of this space. You know, the start of production. <clears throat> that was cool. They're kind of like Lego blocks, right? So we're building panels all the time, regardless of uh, you know the status of the homes, right? And then yep. basically, once we get a permit, we allocate those Lego blocks to specific projects that are like about to get delivered. The inventory, the inventory. of Lego blocks. Yeah, exactly. Design a home that is going to be built in a factory. How would you design it based on that? On that, right? Uh, so design for manufacturability, but also uh, questioning some of the, the requirements and questioning some of the assumptions around like what, what does it need to do, what materials are you using, all that. And so we've done a ground up redesign of the entire physical home 
and how it's made to be geared towards manufacturability from the start. Even though we have a very uh, standardized set of panels, those set of panels can be combined to create a very wide range of designs. It's insane how much you can make out of Legos, right? It's, yep. it's the same thing, right? You have a finite set of blocks that you can make an infinite number of different layouts from. Actually, multiple panels of wood. I don't even like it. Oh, here it is. Uh, this is this is this is one panel, and this is another. Panel. And these two sizes are standard, but you've never even known that that's a panel. Two, mm -hmm. two different panels of wood that that ship to site like that. Big picture, we're ramping to do the maximum we possibly can for this facility. What's your end vision? Ten years, ten, tens of thousands for sure, at least. And at that point, you have a you have your 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 huge factory, like the really big factory that looks more like an automotive factory than, than anything else, right? Production line, automated equipment, really high volume, high degree of automation, and it's it, it, you're talking about a factory that is you know millions of square feet producing tens of thousands of homes, full homes a year.